recently said that he expects the solution to be something that's negotiated between the business community and labor. Do you see that happening? And uh, if so, would that answer your concerns? Um, I was there. I, I heard him say that I think he said that this was um, specifically a labor and, uh, and an employer-based issue. We believe that the table needs to be larger. Um, and again, as I mentioned, the disturbing trends that the disturbing trends that we're seeing in the way of the full-time family-supporting jobs that were there have now been replaced with part-time, temporary, and contingent jobs. And there needs to be a voice from those workers at the table as well as as seniors and persons with disability, we believe that the solution will come from a much broader conversation about the real world realities of what work looks like now and the need to ensure that we have a strong solvent system that responds at a time of job losses through no fault of uh, a, a worker. Uh, Lisa, have you expressed these concerns to the sponsor? Has there been any kind of um, indication that she's open to expanding at the table? Yeah, I've talked with uh, Representative Sears, we have, and uh, we have, uh, um, our, our uh, tact at this point is that we believe that we should start over um, and not use HB 394 as a platform to do that with, and Representative Sears is, uh, would like to propose, and I don't want to speak for her, but in our conversations, uh, she's looking <coughs> to amend the bill, um, and our, our approach is to, is to study the issue with a broader group of stakeholders, as Lisa had said, to really achieve that long-term balance approach to solvency and to ensure that the, the program stays viable long term and doesn't shift the burden to those that lose the job through no fault of their own. We don't want to do it for laid off workers. Uh, we want to bear the burden of this. So uh, at this point, we understand that she may be, and again, you'll need to talk with her, but uh, may, may be proposing some amendments as early as tomorrow. Um, but we believe that the, the solution really is to start over and to do it with a broader base of stakeholders. So the state has a $774 million debt that they have to pay the federal government. You're obviously critical of the bill. Do you have any financial mechanisms to which you think could solve this problem other than just say start from scratch? Uh, given that our approach is a pulling together a broad base of stakeholders, I think it would be uh, uh, it would be a bit presumptuous for me or for us to say here's our approach. Uh, we believe that that approach would come through more a collective understanding of the current changes to the environment of work, the shift to part time, shift to temporary, uh, shift to lower skilled jobs and really to have that conversation um, as a whole to come up with a solution. I believe that we have the same ends in mind, um, that we believe that the fund needs to be solvent long term, that we need to pay back the federal government, that we need to not fund our unemployment uh, system on a credit card to the federal government, that that is not in our uh, best interest of the state or the folks receiving unemployment compensation. Uh, but we don't, we don't have something right now in our back pocket that says, here's what we uh, believe. We believe we ought to do that through a broader group of stakeholders that brings various per perspectives to the table to come up with a solution that really will be a balanced and long-term approach. Do you have any proposals on what changes you might want to see on the worker side given the change to the status of workers in Ohio now? Hannah, did you want to, just, and just real quick, Hannah Hall, the policy manager as well, the debt that's currently owed to the federal government, that is on schedule to be paid off. This bill doesn't touch that piece of the problem. So that's sort of a, a separate and apart issue. And the longer term solvency, like how do we prepare now for the bad times, for the future gifts, that's what we're talking about here today. And that's what this bill is intending to do, but it never actually quite gets to a place of solving that real solvency problem. The bill itself, if you look at the LSC analysis, if folks don't have that, we can make sure you get it. It doesn't even reach its own establishment of safe rule. So there's a lot of reworking that needs to be done, and that's exactly why the folks here at AOF and other partners, like us at Policy Matters, are saying, let's get together, let's figure this thing out in a real serious way. And Mike, do you have anything to add to that? Um, yes, the, the federal debt that Hannah was referring to will be paid off in 2017. Whereas the cuts and benefits would be implemented at the beginning of next year and extend through 2025. And according to the Legislative Service Commission's fiscal analysis, 
would total about $4.3 billion in reduced benefits for unemployed workers in Ohio. Through 2025. Through the 2025. Back to Kathy's question. Yes. Kathy, would you would you mind restating your question? <laughs> it was uh, what, what changes? What changes? <laughs> What changes would you propose given this change in the workforce, you know, part more part-time workers, more, more seasonal? What kind of changes to the unemployment system would you think necessary to kind of better serve folks, workers today? And a great question, and certainly one that would allow a low-wage worker who is laid off through no fault of their own, who many currently do not even um, become eligible because of a lack of earnings both in the time period at which they're working, meaning they're not currently hitting the quarterly hour, uh, the quarterly work qualifications, nor are their wages high enough, that an unemployment compensation system that is a, a thoughtful, thorough uh, approach would be one that would recognize the new uh, world of work, which is low wage, part time, and temporary, or contingent workers that would allow for benefits of laid off part-time workers to be made available. And that's the real problem that we see right now. So many jobs that are out there, and again, I can tell you from my own experience, folks who are stringing together two, three, and four jobs, they lose one job uh, and it makes it very difficult. So we want to see that part-time work or the new era of work is recognized and that those workers would be eligible for benefits. Did you want to say anything about that, Mark? Um, yes. Um, as Lisa said, Ohio's current unemployment compensation program already makes it more difficult for low-income workers, particularly those with temporary and part-time jobs, to qualify for any benefits at all. That's the current program. They might we have a higher and say the microphone. Okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mike has been working on this. He's one of our in-house technical experts. Okay. So anyway, as uh, as Lisa said, um, it's already harder for workers in Ohio than any other state, except possibly Arizona, um, to qualify for unemployment comp benefits um, be, if they're low income and have um, temporary or part-time employment. Um, Ohio has a higher qualifying amount of earnings. You have to have proven that your earnings were at a certain level during your prior year of employment um, before you can qualify for any benefits at all. And that's the existing program. What this bill does is it would make it even harder. It would create additional barriers for low-income workers in Ohio by imposing additional waiting periods so that a worker who had a short-term job or who has repeatedly called back to work by a temporary staffing agency, every time they stopped working, there would be an additional one-week waiting period before they could get any benefits at all, and they wouldn't get any benefits for that one-week waiting period. Um, also, the requirement that you have to have had earnings during three quarters instead of two quarters during your base year creates an additional barrier for workers um, who have temporary part-time work, <coughs> especially at the low income end of the wage scale. Um, no other state does that. Um, it goes without saying that this bill would result in Ohio being an outlier. It would have um, more barriers to people obtaining unemployment benefits than any other state in the country. Now, that's not to say necessarily that the dollar amounts would necessarily be lower than every other state, but be harder for workers to get any unemployment benefits at all than in any other state in the country. 